Hey. There he is. Hey, How in. are you? Nice to see you. You we're, too? We're friends. Nice to meet you. This is Jeremy. Hey, Jeremy. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> I know we're a little late, but thanks for having us. Come on in. So this is the apparatus floor, as we call it, and pumper 245. Which That's quite the apparatus. It's quite the apparatus. So you'll be on the back of that with us today. Fantastic. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Good stuff. You're obviously going to have to uh, share a few things with me first. Depends what you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll show you how to get on the truck sure. using the handles and so forth, and then you follow suit. Sounds right? good. So one hand here, one hand here, foot on the step, and up you go. Gotcha. Really simple. One, two. Perfect. And then that's the easy part. And we're going to have you today sitting right here. So I'll let you sit on that chair. Okay, so am I the first one in the truck then so the other guys can come in it's after up me? It's to you. You can come around this side also if you like. Okay, so there's your seat. And of course, we're going to make sure you buckle up. We want to make sure that everybody on the fire truck is always wearing their seatbelt at all times, especially responding to calls. So. Okay. Now I'm assuming that I'm going to have all the gear on, mm -hmm. so it's going to be that much more difficult to move around and Absolutely. do everything we need to do. Yep. You've got to make sure your bunker pants are on, your bunker coat is on, and then the seatbelt goes on. We do not leave the station without the belt on. If I could only find the other <laughs> end of the seatbelt. <laughs> okay. That's quite the view from back here. It's an excellent view. And you can see how all the cars generally don't move over for us. <laughs> and that's an important uh, point to make. Yeah. Obviously, uh, when you're out on the road and you see a fire truck coming, you know to move over to the right, but not everybody does that. Not everybody does. In fairness, a lot of people do. There's your gear. Go behind the boots. Take your shoes off. Throw them off to the side so that the truck doesn't run over them when we pull out. Okay. One leg at a time. Pant, pants uh, close to the leg, just Inside. tuck them in, yeah. and then your second. Pants at the sides with the straps, over your shoulders. Now generally, how long do we have to do this to get out the door? We want to be dressed and out by you know 30 seconds, 45 seconds max. 30 seconds? Yeah. We're well past that time already, okay. Oh well, practice makes perfect. <laughs> Grab the coat off to the side, put it on, you get thumb perfect. Got that. Zip up. And it's amazing how much weight you guys are carrying yeah. in just these suits. And that's just before we get the air breathing apparatus on and start carrying our tools. There you go. All right. So you have tools, you have your hats, helmets, your helmets. Yeah. And just like that, you're running. We're ready to go. And remember, right. if this was a fire call, you'd have that balaclava hood that you would need to put on to protect you in case it was a fire. So that's another thing that you, and you need to put that on before you put your jacket on. And then you put your mask on over that when you get to the scene. And You're making up. this that much more <laughs> difficult, my friend. It's not that bad once you do it for a few times. So this is basically our sitting area. Kitchen. So this is the living quarters. Living quarters, kitchen. This is where we spend most of our time in between calls. And we'll bring you in here. We've got the sitting room in here. Okay. We've got uh, firefighter Ian Keith studying. There we go. <laughs> training <laughs> diligently. It. It's all part of the training. <laughs> this is it. After you guys, you lead the way. My name's Ian Keith. Uh, I've been on the job 17 years. Uh, I was a paramedic prior to that for four or five, and I thought this uh, would be a good transition for me. You know, it, it, the job entails the same kind of thing, basically, but uh, fighting fires is uh, what I've always wanted to do. It's, it's fun. It's dangerous, but it's fun. And uh, again, it's working with the community. You're helping out. The, you're helping out your community and working with people and. This was a good fit for me. There are days where it's quite quiet here and you're you're pulling your hair out, but um, you, uh, you, you tend to relish those days because sometimes you're you're going all day long and it's nice to have a break every now and then, but like you said, yeah, it's different every day. The hall that we're at, we got a good variety of calls. 
go through. It's highly residential, but we also have industrial areas. We have the highway, 404. So uh, we got a good mix of calls. Actually, Paul's been an exceptional addition to this truck and uh, it's going to be very hard to lose him. He's got over 35 years experience. So you just don't replace uh, those number of years overnight. And uh, I've always told him he comes to work with a smile on his face and uh, does a great job for us when he gets here. I've always said to the younger guys, take a look at Paul. He should be your role model for coming to work. I'm concentrating on what I have to say. So I wait a second before I start talking? It's just just yeah, have a second. <clears throat> All right. Now I'm nervous. More so than being on camera. Toronto Fire Pumper 245, clear from Birch Mountain in Eglinton, heading back to the station. Roger, Pumper 245. There you go. <laughs> there you go. We're on our way. Well, a false alarm this time around, but you never know the next call. We'll try again soon. I assume that those guys have moved on or found another spot to set themselves up. Is it everyone? I can't believe they're probably there first. Yeah. Uh, it's, we'll get it right off there. When we come to the intersections where there's a median and the vehicles that were at the light can't get around it, we've got to turn our sirens off until the light turns green. Otherwise, the drivers really get confused and we don't want any accidents occurring as a result of that. 43, arrived Walmart, Scarborough Town Center. There are no signs visible. Can you advise how this call came in on? So a quick update, Captain. Right now, we're just waiting to hear more from uh, in-store security. When you get to a place this large, We've got to try and track down the alarm, whether it was false or an actual fire right now, we don't know. Obviously, you've got a few other trucks here as well. So is there uh, an order to all of this? Absolutely. And first incoming trucks are assigned based on the location to the call where it came in from. And then based on the size of the facility, we'll mandate how many trucks they're going to send to this. So for a call like this in a large store, we're going to get you know a lot of a lot of apparatus responding initially. So you tend to stand by at this point and wait to see what happens. Yeah, the first in captain is in right now, checking the situation and give us an update as to whether or not he needs more assistance or whether we're going to clear. So what's actually happened here is that somebody smelled an electrical smell inside the building. That prompted obviously all of these trucks to come. At this point, they have to try and figure out what's going on inside before they can tell these guys it's okay or whether they have to move in. Comfort 232, Comfort 245, Comfort 233, Squad 232, Aerial 231, Car 23, Response to the alarm, Scarborough General Hospital. Uh, right now we're responding to General Alarms at Scarborough General Hospital. We've got uh, two fire apparatus on scene right now, including a district chief, and uh, the crews are just assessing. We have to continue to send everybody in until we verify 100%. It is a fault in the system, like a pressure drop as opposed to an actual fire. No matter what the call is, you always step it up, your adrenaline starts to flow, and uh, you deal with the situation that you're presented with, whether it's a false alarm or an actual fire, you've gotta be ready for just about anything, which is probably why most of us are on this job, because we like that, that kind of action. Your attention, attention. Toronto Fire Services is on scene, investigating the alarms. Stay in your units until further advised. Go ahead and reset, yeah. And thanks for waiting for us to come down with you, by the way. Appreciate that. Explain to us what just happened now. What happened was uh, first incoming apparatus uh, went to the 16th floor to check where the alarms were based on the panel indicator in the front lobby. I was a second in truck, so we assume what's called lobby control. So we've got to make the enunciation to 
the people in the building to let them know that we're on scene and investigating and stay in their units until fur further advised. And that way they shelter in place. And then that once she resets good, then we're, we know we don't have an issue. What would have tripped the alarm in the first place? It, it can be a lot of different things. You have somebody smoking in a hallway, for example, setting off an alarm. You could have somebody cooking in a unit, setting off an alarm. And depending on whether or not we smell or see smoke on the respective floor, we may have to do investigate, investigate further by going door to door, knocking everybody's door to make sure that there's nothing going on in the units because they sometimes will be fearful of retribution if they do set it off. So you guys take your turns in the kitchen, as you said earlier? Yeah, usually, or, or we, it's a collaboration. We work together. Generally, I just say, get lost, because I'll just get my way. But uh, yeah, you, if somebody's got an, got, got an idea for a recipe, or, or they want to cook, or it's, it's good. I, but I, I like to do it myself. That way, you don't have to, you don't have to clean up. So fill us in on what you're preparing for everyone tonight. This is just easy. Um, just a stuffed chicken breast with prosciutto, jalapeno verde, and asparagus wrapped in with a little bit of uh, roasted red pepper sauce. We have a uh, medical call, uh, collapse, possible uh, arrest, so it could be, uh, could be quite serious. We don't, we don't know yet until we get there, so. Hi there. Straight ahead, hi. What's yeah. happening? How you doing? You're okay, you're okay. You need, you need to keep that on, okay? Just leave that on. We have everything? All our stuff? I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. Six calls in a little over three hours, is that typical? Not, tr not normally, no. It's uh, a little bit above the norm, but again, what is the norm? It changes so, so often here. Um, but I can show you how quickly things can happen and we were at, we, I don't know, four of those calls, we never got back to the station. Now in terms of percentages, how often is a call, one of the false alarms, you show up, it's not really anything to deal with versus something that you have to jump into action right away? Well, a higher percentage of calls obviously are what we would term false alarms, but it still requires full turnout of apparatus. It requires the first responding units to do what we did in terms of getting up to the alarm floor, ensuring that there was no Im imminent uh, emergency. So around this table, we've got different levels of experience. A lot of years. You, sir, have been at it how long? Coming up to my 23rd. 23rd? 35. 35? 17. 17? 17. 17. All in all, a very busy day, but the one thing I didn't get a chance to do was ride this thing. On second thought, I didn't get a chance to wear these on the truck. Well, there's always next time.